morning, everyone, and welcome to the Ventura Center for Spiritual Living. My name is uh, Reverend Judy Pando. I'm p pinch inning for Reverend Bonnie this week. She is off doing something, I hope, very fun. Uh, and this is Brock, and he's going to welcome you as well, right? Hi. Is this working? Yes. Well, I, I'm seeing new people, which is wonderful. It's very nice to see new faces. Welcome, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Um, just maybe close your eyes for a second and just feel what an amazing room this is. Uh, pretty much everybody in this room is in some way committed to uh, wisdom and kindness, you know, committed to the truth of what we really are and our love for all beings. And it's an amazing room to be in. It's an amazing gift, a grace to be in this room. And we're so grateful to be here with you. And we're so glad that you're here and it's going to be a, a mystical experience. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm seeing some, I was going to say old faces, but what I mean is <laughs> <laughs> recognizable faces that I, have, <laughs> that I have seen for many, many years. And I'm so glad that you're here, too. And Bill Hadris is going to give us a little talk from Youth and Family. I'm Bill Hadris with Youth and Family. Today, I'd like everyone, see if you can find your pulse, maybe on your neck or your wrist, just below your thumb. Is it slow? No? <laughs> Keep trying. It's there. Is it slow? Is it fast? Can you make it go slower? Maybe relax, meditate, or how about sleeping? What happens if you don't get enough rest? I invite you to close your eyes, relax, and think for a moment. What happens when you sleep? How do you feel after a peaceful sleep? How about nature? Does nature sleep? How does nature sleep? Now, what happens when nature wakes up? Whether we have a long sleep, a little downtime, maybe meditate, or just a moment to recenter or reset, every moment of every day we change our thinking about ourselves, others, and our life choices. Renewal is that sense of peace we experience when the slate is clean a new day has dawned, and we remember everything is possible. So I invite you to repeat after me. Everything is possible when I reset. Everything is possible when I reset. And so it is. And so in the spirit of renewal, a brand new Sunday, a beautiful Sunday, it's so glorious to see everyone's face. And I'm going to invite us, um, when we sing I Am Remembering, to put your mask up to your face if you have one, um, or just try not to spit on anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Dina, would you pray us in, please? First we'll pray in. <laughs> so again, finding ourselves right here, right now. Breathing in, breathing out. And any practitioners who wish to, whether here or connected online with us right now in this moment, or even later, may stand and know this prayer with all of us. It's a beautiful day in Ventura, knowing there's one God, one source, one power, one life. That life is my life. That life is everyone's life in the room and beyond this room. 
knowing that we come together right now in connection, whether present in our sanctuary or present online or tuning in later. It's all now, all happening now. I know today's words are perfect as we listen to Kusala share wisdom, beautiful music with Darius, and guidance with Judy, our Reverend Judy, as we all bring love together today and receive that love. I'm so thankful for time together here again. Always thankful for this time together. Thankful for everyone here and for our connection. release my words in gratitude knowing they're so and together we say and so it is and so staying in that place that Dina so beautifully led us let's take a breath and join together in song remembering who it is and well who it is that we are and what it is that we're doing here in this perfect moment So we take that experience, that feeling, back into our open-eyed state, being in love with what is, as it is, and so it is. Darius? How are you guys feeling this morning? Good? It's nice to be out and about. It's nice to see human beings. Uh, well, this first song is an original song, and it's, uh, it's about the only thing we can really do ultimately. This song's called Choose Love. So many choices in the world today. Too many things can blow your mind And if you're needing just a 
simple truth to see you on your way. Remember, choose love, choose love, choose love, and keep on shining a light. And choose love, choose love, choose love, and keep on shining a light. And choose love. Life is a game that we're all free to play You can hold it down or let it breathe And if you're needing just a simple song To sing along the way Together choose love Choose love Choose love Keep on shining a light and choose love, choose love, choose love, and keep on shining a light and choose love. Only love can move mountains, only love can win the day. Love is always forgiveness, so make that choice right here today, and choose love, choose love, choose love, and keep on shining the light, and choose love, choose love, choose love. Keep on shining our light and choose love, choose love, choose love, and keep on shining our light and choose love, 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 choose love, and keep on shining our light and choose love. Okay, look at all the faces today. You know, it's good to see faces again. Because uh, sometimes all you see is a mask, you know. And normally, people wear masks anyway, even when they're not. So it's, it's cool. I'm going to uh, read more than I normally do, and then give uh, personal commentary on what I'm reading about. Because a, a couple weeks ago, I came to the conclusion that this pandemic we've been having, this home isolation we've been having, is very similar to going on retreat. And some people go on retreat for a week or a month, a year, even longer. So in a way, we have all been on retreat. And now we have to come out. And how do you do that skillfully? What kind of mindset is important to have when you venture back into the world, and especially on the freeway. <laughs> I have the feeling a lot of people forgot how to drive. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start off with Confucius. He's a good guy to start off with. He said, we all have two lives, and the second begins when we realize we only have one. <laughs> now, I thought about this for a while, and I thought to myself, man, I've had many lives in this one lifetime. I've been young, I've been middle-aged, I'm old, I've done this, I've done that, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. So there were a lot of me's walking through my life. And now I've come to the point after a year of reflection that I got one life. And it, it's on a timer. So what am I going to do? How am I going to use the years, months, hours I have left to make a difference in my life 
and maybe reduce suffering in the lives of others. So this became very clear to me as I sat at the meditation center for a year, wondering why? Why are we having this pandemic? Why are we all on retreat? And then it came to me, it doesn't matter why. I know everybody wants to know, but it doesn't really matter why. It's what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Now, my first meditation teacher, Shinzen Young, used to say, after a retreat, you will have either afterburn or afterglow. Now, I have seen a lot of people with afterburn. <laughs> they are just not happy campers. They didn't want to be on retreat. They didn't ask for it. They didn't pay for it. They didn't know what to do with it. So what does that mean? Let me tell you what that means to me. On retreat, if you've ever had a chance to be on retreat, you'll find a lot of stuff that was buried deep down in that subconscious starts to rise and starts to become apparent again. And I've often thought, I thought that was over. I thought I forgot that. I thought that was gone. You know what? None of that stuff ever goes away. It's always there. So the afterglow, when that occurs after retreat, means that we have processed all that stuff and come to a place of acceptance with it. It's no longer a problem. It can be at the subconscious level or the conscious level, and you're fine with it because that's not who you are. That isn't, isn't even who you used to be. It's, it's highly edited. We think about our past life, and we either have a good one or a bad one, but generally speaking, life is just life, and we add the value. So the afterglow is when you've processed and come to a place of acceptance. And the afterburn is when you're in process. And all this stuff comes up. And you go, how could I have been such a jerk? Look what I did. And look how I did it. Wow. And you keep beating yourself up day after day because this stuff is conscious now and you're in process and you're trying to come to a place of acceptance with it. Sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes it takes far longer than it should because we don't know how to work with this stuff. We personalize it. We identify with it. But you know what? Really, it's just thinking, thinking. It's what the brain does. It's what the consciousness does. You're thinking all the time. You're thinking while you're driving. You're thinking while you're sleeping. Called dreams. You're thinking about going in. You're thinking about coming out. You're always thinking about something. And most of the stuff really is not very important at all. It's just thinking, thinking. So if you're suffering from afterburn because of the pandemic, and the home isolation, realize that a lot of people are. And there are ways to process it. And sometimes we need help. Sometimes we need people who know how to process. And sometimes we just need to sit quietly in the zendo for a few hundred hours. <laughs> <laughs> and let the stuff come up and just go away. And come up and go away. And one day it might not come up, and you go, wow, okay. But something else will. <laughs> so it's a never-ending challenge. Okay, I'm, I've, I've recorded some information from spiritual teachers talking about retreat, and I'm gonna use the word retreat and home isolation and pandemic just to tie it all together. The first teacher says, let the tools and prayers get planted in you so the mindfulness can take over whether you're in silent retreat or on pandemic or standing in Vaughn's supermarket. <laughs> Once you have the means to be guided from the inside out, you can have presence and quiet anywhere. You're in charge. And that can be really intimidating. You're in charge of your life. You may not be able to change the circumstances of your life, but you can change the way you experience those circumstances. 
You can change the way you relate to them. You can give meaning or take meaning away. You're in charge, and that can be scary because a lot of us don't know how to be in charge. We've been told what to do our whole life. We've been told who we are, what we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to do. And now all that stuff after the pandemic doesn't seem as important or relevant as it did before the pandemic. We go, you know, nobody knew this was coming. All the people that had been through the last one are dead, you know? And not because of the pandemic, but just because they got old and died. And here we are, and we have all the experts. Don't you love the experts? They get on TV or CNN or MSNBC, and they tell us stuff. Well, I think, oh no, thinking, thinking again. <laughs> Man, it never stops. And what do they know? They've never been through this before either. They read a book. It was on page 34. They're sharing it with us. They're experts. Oh man, those experts are getting to me. I don't want to hear from the experts. I want to hear from people that actually feel stuff and not just think stuff. How do you feel about the pandemic? How do you feel about going back into the world? What does it mean to you? Those are the people I want to hear because that information is going to be useful. The other stuff is useful to think about. You know, okay, I'm thinking about it. You know, okay, good. Did it change my life in any way? No, it just gave me more stuff to think about. <laughs> okay, so how am I gonna change my life if I'm in charge? It starts from the inside out. So you need to do some work. You need to do some work on yourself. Not necessarily have other people work on you, but you need to do it. And come to some interesting conclusions about who you are now. Not who you were a year ago or two years ago, but who are you now? Because you are not the same person. Number two, another te spiritual teacher says, get this, you are not the same person. You were at the beginning of the pandemic, so don't try to be. Another spiritual teacher says, I like to tell people, when you go on retreat, you don't ever come back. <laughs> Whoa, huh? is that a cool thing to say to people? You know, as they leave the retreat, you can never go home again. <laughs> but you know what they're saying is that you have changed and you can't ever go back to who you used to be before the pandemic. That person died in the pandemic. Physically, you're still walking around, but that other person is gone. So when you go on retreat, you don't ever come back. I don't mean physically come back. You physically come back, of course, but you may find something during the retreat, during the pandemic, whether it was truth, peace, freedom, love. If you maintain the same focus in your everyday life, and keep it in the forefront of your consciousness, it will transform you completely. I love that. We, I know we've all found stuff this past year that we weren't looking for. You know, and there it was. And you go, wow, okay, cool. Now, can I integrate that? Can I be that now? For a while, but you'll be somebody else pretty soon. Okay, do we ever reach fruition? No, we're always in a constant state of becoming, according to Buddhism. We never get to the destination. We're always on the journey. Now, you may say, well, that's sort of a bummer if I can't ever arrive anyplace. But you know what? Sometimes if you're on a cross-country trip and you get to your destination, you're a little disappointed. Because along the way, you had so many unique and new experiences and met so many people that you would have never met before if you weren't on the road. There's a movie called Nomad, Nomad Land. You know, and I watched that and I thought, wow, did those people learn a lot on the road? Because their home is where they spent the night. 
you know, and that's how it used to be in the old days, you know, when we didn't have homes. We just sort of walked around, found a little food, took a little nap, kept looking for food, ended up here, ended up there. Seemed okay, you know, everybody, they had children, they had fun, they had sleep. They did everything they were supposed to do as a human, but they just didn't have a home. And now a lot of us have homes, a place where we live. And we've been there for a year. Man, you know, it's nice to get out and maybe go and see other stuff and come home again with a new mindset. Oh, I'm glad I got this house. Oh, I'm glad I got this apartment. Oh, I'm glad I got this condo. Because that's sort of my base of operations. And that allows me not to have to carry everything I own on my back or in my car. And I can go traveling. I can meet people, have new experiences, and come back to all my stuff, which is in my home. And then pretty soon, as we start to get a little bit older, we say to ourselves, maybe I don't need this much stuff. Maybe I should share it, give it away, let other people enjoy the stuff that I've enjoyed for years. And then you get close to the end and you say, well, you know, maybe all I need is a lamp and a chair and a good book. Maybe that's enough. Maybe that will fill my life in a special way. And I think, yeah, that's it. And we all are learning so much about home and pandemic and not going out. And now we can go out. So what are we going to do? Another teacher says the reintegration process can be challenging and somewhat confusing. I try to make sure people are grounded in their sense doors before they drive off so they don't become dangerous on the road. When you walk out of the meditation hall or your home after the pandemic, pace yourself. Stop and look at the sky. Smell the air or touch a tree as you walk by. Ground yourself. You've been in that home isolation for a really long time now. And now you go out the front door and it's the same front door you've already used, but somehow it's a little different. And that tree doesn't look as, quite as familiar as it used to because now you notice it. Before you just took it for granted. Yeah, I got trees, I got bushes, I got a sidewalk. But now you look at the tree and you go, wow, I got a tree. And look how big it is. Look how nicely green it is. And you go and you touch it. And that sort of gets you grounded in the reality of that present moment experience that you are feeling. You've never done it before, and you'll never do it again in the same way. That stuff only happens in the present moment. So smell the air. Look at the clouds in the sky. How wonderful they are, because they're never the same cloud twice. They're always changing and transforming. And they're blowing here and they're blowing there, and sometimes they disappear, and sometimes they come back really hard and big and gray and rain falls, and people freak because they're not used from water from the sky. <laughs> Man, this water from the sky, what am I going to do? Enjoy it. You've been in your house for a year. Enjoy the rain. It feels good. And now it's going to be really hot. A lot of people are going to be really complaining a lot. It's so hot. Hey, you get to experience it, man. Sweat. Enjoy the smell. Your cats and dogs do. <laughs> Even if friends and family don't. Enjoy it. You know? An ever-changing environment, that's what we're stuck with. But it gives us a chance to adapt, to see the change, to enjoy the change, to realize that change is normal. And the pandemic was not normal because things didn't seem to change fast enough or in the right way. And the rest of the world still has the pandemic. There are still a lot of people dying and a lot of people sick. But isn't it amazing when you're sitting here in Ventura thinking that you have something in common with every human in the world? You all had a very similar experience at the same time in this planet we call Earth. 
That is incredible. Usually it's, this happens over here, this happens over here, this is political, this isn't political, this is good, this is bad. This happened everywhere at the same time. And we all had this interconnection with all the other people suffering in the same way we were. We can understand now how they feel. Even though they may all think in different languages, they all feel pretty much the same. How lucky are we to have experienced that in our lifetime? Such a rare event we've gone through. Such a rare coming together of humankind. And yet, now we're going back into the world to be independent and separate again. And there'll be some people who are still left behind because they didn't get vaccinated. There'll be some countries that don't have enough vaccination. There'll be some countries that don't have enough hospitals. Are we going to keep them in mind now? We, we felt the way they did. We sensed the inevitability of our own demise. And it didn't happen. For whatever reason, I'm thinking good karma. Man, all of us here had really good karma because, damn, we're here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. So it was a rare event we went through. And now we're coming out of it. And let's not forget what we learned. Let's be the person we've become instead of the person we used to be. I know it's comfortable being who you used to be because you know how that works. And you don't know how this is going to work. But you know what? That's part of the fun. We didn't know anyway. We never know. Every day is the first day. Every day is a new challenge and a new delight, if you will. It's a way to experience our life through the world by being on Earth. We have that in common with everybody. Another teacher says, when you shift out of retreat or the pandemic and back into your life, you will likely default back into some habits and patterns that weren't very good. Another teacher says, life on retreat or life in home isolation is... I tell you, it's never easy. Life on retreat, for the most part, is simple. So I understand after retreat, or after the pandemic, when life gets complicated, it's easier to fall back into condition patterns. But this is another opportunity to be mindful. When you see places in your life that you may previously had been on autopilot, it's a chance to bring awareness to those moments. Now, I like autopilot because I don't have to think about what I'm doing, I can just think about what I'm thinking. How cool is that? So I'm brushing my teeth and I'm thinking about all sorts of stuff other than brushing my teeth, because I learned how to be on autopilot. I have these habit patterns, and it took me years and years to establish these habit patterns, so why the hell not use them? Because it makes life a lot easier, and I have more time to think. But how about, instead of choosing the autopilot way, we choose the awakened way. We wake up for a few moments every day. I'm not telling you to wake up all the time, but just a couple moments every day. Just sort of wake up and see what you're doing without thinking about it. Just experience the movement of the body, the breath, the eardrums vibrating, things like that. How does that feel? What does it mean to be here now, as Ramdas would say? Am I, am I doing a good job at brushing my teeth? Can you do a good job brushing your teeth? Well, according to the dentist, you can, because then you don't have to see him quite as often. But you know, brushing teeth is brushing teeth. And maybe eating yogurt is eating yogurt. But how does it feel to eat the yogurt? What does it taste like? What's the consistency? Does it have pieces of real fruit in there? Or is it chemically created to make you look at the real fruit thinking it's real and it's not? 
what's going on in that yogurt bowl? You know, and if you're thinking about a bunch of other stuff, you'll never know. So that's sort of what I'm talking about is just let's, let's not be on autopilot all the time. Let's be on autopilot when it's really important and useful. And let's be awake part of the time just to see what's going on, just to see how your life is doing, you know? And it's not doing good and it's not doing bad. You gotta be zen-like when it comes to this. It's just doing. My life is doing. Well, is it a good day today? No, it's just a day. <laughs> okay, but don't you want more than just a day? I'm happy to get just a day, believe me. <laughs> So that's the place, that's the place that's real and we can enjoy our life or we can simply live our life. You know, living life, man, what a precious gift we've been given. And some of us has been here a really long time and don't wanna give it back. I don't wanna give back my life. What's gonna happen next? I don't know, maybe heaven. Maybe rebirth, maybe another human existence. Who the heck knows? But that's the exciting part, we don't know. And the people that have left us, oh, how many billions and trillions of people have left us? Have any of them come back and said, hey, this is what it's all about, man. Don't worry, it's cool. You'll be happy when you die. No, I don't know if I'm sure going to be happy when I die because I want to know what's going to happen. No, you're never going to know. So just die well. You know, and, and people say, well, how do you die well? Hey, clergy. That's the word, clergy. Don't ask your clergy how to live. Ask them how to die. Say, how am I supposed to die? Well, you're supposed to live this way. No, no, I don't care about living. Because I sort of know how to do that. I've been doing that for a long time. But I don't know how to die. Can you give me some hints? Can you tell me the most skillful way to let go of this life and accept the next one, whatever it might be? Whether it be heaven, hell, rebirth, whatever it could be. Even if you come back as a day fly, you know, and just fly around for a day and then you're dead. Well, okay. You know? But at least he came back. At least he had a day to live. Didn't get much done. <laughs> so next time you have a nice conversation with your clergy, say, hey, I'm curious. What would you suggest the best way is to die? Maybe they can refer you to some ancient texts. Because a lot of the old ancient texts tell us how to die. And they're all dead, so it must be something to it. You know? And then we got some new people coming up telling us how to die. And Ramdas used to talk about somebody he, he met who was dead and came back and talked to him. And he said, you know, dead people don't have much to offer. And I thought to myself, they don't. If you could talk to a dead person, they wouldn't know about computers or Microsoft 11 coming out pretty soon. They, they'd never heard about computers. They could only tell you about all the other stuff that wasn't relevant to your life right now. So don't worry about talking to dead people and getting some insight. Talk to the living people who have to die and what they're doing. And you know what? That's everybody. So everybody's got something to share with us. How cool is that? How many teachers do we have? Seven billion plus right now. Very cool. Another spiritual teacher says, while this isn't always possible, it's ideal if you can give yourself some time to slowly reintegrate. The world may, can, may seem very loud and fast after retreat or the pandemic. There are so much stimuli now that the rapid pace of life can make you feel like you need to get on board really quickly. We don't need to get on board really quickly. There's nothing to get on board to. It's just the same day we've always had. We got different thinking, thinking going on. And a lot of people are out doing nothing now and going someplace. I don't know where are all these people going. 
you know, you're on the freeway, there's bumper to bumper, LA especially, where do they go? They're not working. They're still getting unemployment. Cool, nice to have that. Are they all going to Disneyland? It's open now. No, I don't know. But so we don't need to jump on the bandwagon and say to ourselves, okay, now I can go out. I'm going to do everything I didn't do for the past year. We don't need to do that. We can slowly go out. And what I like to recommend is like when I started riding my motorcycle. And I rode a motorcycle for 20 plus years. And, and what I would do is I'd sit on the motorcycle and I'd sort of feel it. You know, how does it feel between my legs and the handlebars and the clutch and the brake and the throttle? How does all that stuff feel? And then I'd sort of look around, check the tires, make sure they're okay, inflated. And then I'd start the engine, I'd listen to the engine. I didn't know what I was listening to, but I was listening to the engine. And then I would slowly take off. I wouldn't, you know, jam out of the parking place. I'd just slowly talk off, take off. And I'd just make my way down the street, and eventually I'd hit the freeway, and I'd ease into a lane, and I would go 65, 70, and it was, it was cool. But I didn't, I didn't push it. I knew there was a natural rhythm I needed to get into. I needed to get into the flow. Now, the flow is sort of mystical. What the hell is a flow? Well, it's the way life works. Life just sort of flows moment to moment to moment to moment. And oftentimes, we don't like the way it's flowing. We want to change it. I wish it would flow faster. I wish it would flow slower. Ooh, I like that. I wish that would stay for a while. And that's not how it works, really. We jump into the river. I love the river simile. And we jump into the river, and we just flow along. Sometimes we're tempted to grab a branch to slow our travel. Or we see a bunch of rocks in front, you know, and we don't want to hit the rocks as we're flowing because we know it's going to hurt. It's an obstacle. And every path has an obstacle. But sometimes the obstacle is the path. So we're going down the river flowing. Cool. And when, when does it end? Well, the river never ends. It just keeps flowing. We end. We don't even get out of the river. We just end. We just disappear in the, in the flow of the universe. How cool is that? But the flow continues. And even when the earth burns out, the sun can't warm us any longer, the flow is still there. The flow is dependent on change. The flow is dependent on impermanence. And everything is permanent. Everything changes. So that's cool. So what that means to us is if we want to be in the flow, we need to change. We need to be as impermanent as that river. They say you can't put your foot in the same river twice. Well, you can't put your foot in the same life twice either. So we need to be flexible. And it's not bad to be flexible. It's not bad to be awake. It's not bad to be aware that everything's changing because it gives us a chance to test out our skill set. How much did I learn? How much did I have to forget in order to learn? And how am I doing in this impermanence and change that sometimes just drives me crazy because there's no place to stand and nothing to hold on to? We have to let everything go all the time. We have to keep our hands open. We can't ever close them and clutch something. And that can be disappointing. Because we have things in our life that we love and are attached to and wish they would last forever and ever. And nothing does. And we have to be able to let go and do it in a way that doesn't disturb the flow. So the flow gives us stuff and the flow takes stuff away and we never close our hand. We have an open hand when we're given things. We have an open hand when stuff is taken away. And we go, yeah. You know, it's that give and take. It doesn't end. That's our life. Now, Marcus Aurelius, I love this guy. You know, I, I, I probably read about him in high school. You know, but I forgot. You know, high school was a long time ago. And I wasn't a very good student. 
But I found Marcus Aurelius again. And I'm going, wow, this guy was smart. This is the, his meditations. This was like his journal. This is what he wrote when he was like really old and had lived a long life and had understood plenty of things that most of us probably don't understand because we haven't had those experiences. So I found this quote from Marcus Aurelius, and it starts out, concentrate every minute like a Roman. How cool is that? Let's all be Romans. You know, I, I found YouTube during the pandemic. I've been to Rome many times now, thanks to YouTube. And the Colosseum, man, what a huge thing that is. And all the buildings and all the altars to all the gods, small gs. Wow. So Marcus is saying, hey, man, be like a Roman. Okay, what, so what does a Roman do? Uh, a Roman is like a man on doing what's in front of him and with precise and genuine seriousness, tenderly, willingly, with justice, and on freeing yourself from all other distractions. Yes, yes, you can do that, he says. If you do everything as if it were the last thing you were doing in your life and stop being aimless, stop letting your emotions override what your mind tells you, stop being hypocritical, self-centered, irritable, you will see how few things you have to do to live a satisfying life. You know, so that distracted mind. Man, everything is distracting. Anybody get the phone call? I found it on my answering machine. Your new car warranty is about to expire. <laughs> what the hell? If the pandemic wasn't bad enough, now, and I don't even have a new car, the warranty is about to expire. But we can fix that. Call us back at da 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 da. Okay, man, that's one big distraction. Because now you're thinking, I don't have a new car. Did it have a warranty? I never used it. I don't know. You do a little investigation, spend a little time. What? On what? What's that for? What's that for? You know? So if we can find a way to be less distracted, to be focused like a Roman on what's at hand, what's in front of us, what does this present moment beg us to do? We got a chance. We got a chance at having a full life a full life with less things. Now that doesn't make sense in America to have a full life with less things, but sometimes less things, there's less of a chance to distract us and we can, we can get more into the present moment. We can in, enjoy all the change and impermanence, and impermanence that we're experiencing. We can be here now. We can be alive. And the pandemic was a great teacher. It told us what we needed to work on. And now's our chance. And we're in charge. Thank you for showing up today and showing me your faces. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know I love you coming here because we always talk about death. <laughs> it does. It does. I'm a hospice chaplain, so I know a little bit about it. And so if any of you all want to know about death, talk to me afterwards. <laughs> but let's take a moment now and turn within in prayer. And I'm going to start our prayer by quoting Kusala. Damn, I'm still here. After all these years, after all these years, I give such great thanks for that truth. I'm still here. I'm still here and I'm still one with that power, that presence, that life that is God, that love that is God, that kindness and compassion that is God. I am one with all of that and so much more. So grateful to be a part of this beautiful center, this 
this vortex of holiness, this place to know and remember the truth of our lives. And so from this place of love and kindness and, and, and gratitude, I give thanks for this teaching. I give thanks for all paths to God, churches, mosques, as ashrams, all of it, all of it because there is only one destination and that is the oneness where we already are. And so I say, thank you, Spirit. Thank you, God, for this life. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, God, for this place, for this service, and for all who are attending, for all who feel the love that we have to share here. So with a grateful heart, I release this word into the mystery that is the law, and together we say, and so it is. Well, thank you. That was deep, dude. I, I got to get it together now. You're right. Um, this song's an oldie bit of goodie. Lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, 
lovely day, a lovely day, and tomorrow's a lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, a lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, a lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, a lovely day, lovely day, lovely day, a lovely day, a lovely day. Thank you. And it's just another day. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And I look at you, and the world's all right with me. <laughs> so let's, um, I'll read some announcements. Uh, the flowers today are in loving support of our LBGTQIA2 plus members. Say that fast three times, yeah. <laughs> and, we have a, and we have some classes coming up. Ernest Holmes Meets the Buddha, presented five Thursdays beginning on July 29th through August 26th via Zoom, facilitated by Mary and David, and you can register online at the VCSL website. Creating greater balance and harmony in your life using feng shui one Saturday. July 17th, 1 to 2.30, our beautiful Susan Seal is presenting that, that uh, class, and oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Wednesday meditation, the way of counsel. Mm -hmm. This Wednesday, June 30th, 6.30 p.m., facilitated by Doreen Palermo and Kim Bryson, also via Zoom. American Red Cross Blood Drive, Tuesday, July 13th, 5.30 p.m. Must pre-register at uh, www.redcrossblood.org, and we're sponsoring that. And uh, California reopened on, yay, <laughs> June 15th. We're slowly coming out of <laughs> our retreat. <laughs> And, uh, but we're going to continue to work with the state and keep everybody safe, so masks are optional, but we will keep you posted regarding youth, hospitality, and midweek meditations. After the service, if you're having a little difficulty with that process of coming out of the pandemic, um, one of our practitioners are available to serve you, to pray with you, to maybe give you a little coaching on um, how to do it healthily and safely. Uh, next week, next week, yay, we're going to have coffee and tea, and we can, and please bring wrapped treats to share. So, I would like to end this service with a very, I'm, you know, I'm a very old science of mind person, and I want to do a very old science of mindy kind of affirmation. So, if you would, if you want to, please repeat after me. Let's see if I can remember it. It's been a while. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. It is this one wild, wonderful, precious life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my heart. Life is in my body. Life is in all of my experiences. I receive it. I accept it. I give great thanks for it. Just the way that it is. And just the way that it is not. Thank you, life. And so it is. <laughs> Enjoy your day.